Travel Medicine, a closer look at the world map. Are you looking for information on diseases with regional patterns? In this Chalk Talk episode, we'll provide you with a general overview and brief introduction on diseases to consider. This includes distribution patterns, modes of transmission, and main symptoms. So what are we waiting for? Let's go explore the map of the world. Schistosomiasis is a parasitic disease acquired by contact with contaminated fresh water. It's caused by schistosoma trematodes, also known as blood flukes. The parasites usually live in fresh water, where they mature into snails. The infectious larvae, also termed cercaria, can penetrate the skin when humans come into contact with contaminated water. This can cause a puritic maculopapular rash at the point of entry, commonly known as swimmer's itch. The parasites then migrate to the liver. Apart from a local reaction, most infections are asymptomatic. However, in some individuals, the eggs or adult worms are recognized by the immune system, resulting in Katayama fever, an acute form of schistosomiasis. Symptoms include fever, cough, and angioedema. Depending on the schistosoma type, adult worms migrate to the intestine or bladder, resulting in two main forms of chronic schistosomiasis. These forms occur in response to egg deposition and are the result of chronic inflammation. Intestinal schistosomiasis presents with abdominal pain and bloody diarrhea, whereas clinical findings in urogenital schistosomiasis are dysuria and hematuria. If the eggs enter the bloodstream, they're transported to other organs such as the liver, kidney, or central nervous system. Schistosomiasis is the leading cause of portal hypertension worldwide. The regional distribution of the different chronic forms depends on the distribution pattern of the parasite. Intestinal schistosomiasis is prevalent in South America and Asia, whereas urogenital schistosomiasis is more common in the Middle East and Northern Africa. Both forms are frequently observed in other regions of Africa. The only preventative measure against infection is to avoid contact with fresh water in endemic areas. Schistosomiasis can be effectively treated with the anthelmintic prisoquintil. The most historically feared disease by travelers is malaria. It clinically presents with nonspecific findings such as fever, nausea, and vomiting after an incubation period of one to six weeks. Despite its prevalence in Africa, South America, and Southeast Asia, approximately 90% of more than 200 million annual cases of malaria occur in Africa. Several types of malaria exist, which are caused by different plasmodium species. Among these, Plasmodium falciparum is the most common, accounting for approximately three quarters of cases worldwide. The female Anopheles mosquito acts as a vector, transferring sporozoites through their bite. The sporozoites enter the bloodstream of the human host and migrate to the liver. After maturation, they re-enter the bloodstream and invade erythrocytes which rupture and release merozoites that induce fibril inflammatory response. As a preventative measure, Travelers are strongly advised to use exposure prophylaxis, such as mosquito repellents and mosquito nets. In addition, chemoprophylaxis can be used. The drug of choice depends on the destination and duration of stay, and considers the current status of drug resistance. However, antimalarial drugs don't prevent infection. Instead, they alleviate clinical manifestations by attacking developmental forms of the parasite. Due to the strong adverse effects of chemoprophylaxis, a detailed look at the local risk of malaria should be made. As a general rule of thumb, there's no risk of malaria infections in locations with temperatures below 15 degrees Celsius, which are in various high altitude areas in the tropics. Another mosquito-borne fibril disease is dengue fever. It's caused by infection with dengue virus and is primarily transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Therefore, the risk areas of dengue infection cover most of the distribution areas of Aedes aegypti. Dengue is found in tropical and subtropical regions worldwide, especially in Southeast Asia, but also in Central and South America, Africa, Oceania, and Northeast Australia. Although approximately 90% of infected individuals remain asymptomatic, a severe course with hemorrhagic fever occurs in 1-2% of cases. Dengue hemorrhagic fever is characterized by bleeding, shock, and organ dysfunction, 
and can be fatal. Progression to severe forms occur especially in patients with either concurrent infection with different serotypes of dengue virus or in patients immune to one or more serotypes as a result of previous infection. A live attenuated vaccine is currently available in some endemic countries. However, it isn't recommended for travelers. Dengue prevention is limited to avoiding mosquito exposure in endemic areas. Aedes mosquitoes are also involved in the transmission of another hemorrhagic fever, yellow fever. This disease is currently more localized than dengue fever and malaria. Most yellow fever infections occur in sub-Saharan Africa between 15 degrees north and 18 degrees south of the equator. Other regions of risk for travelers are the tropical regions of northern South America. This region is also referred to as the yellow fever belt. The disease is caused by a yellow fever virus, which can result in viral hemorrhagic fever. Clinical manifestations include liver dysfunction, renal failure, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and shock. The most effective preventative measure against yellow fever is vaccination, with a single-dose vaccine available that provides lifelong protection. Some countries require travelers coming from yellow fever endemic areas to provide proof of vaccination. The protozoan parasite Trypanosoum brucei is restricted to sub-Saharan Africa, giving rise to a disease that is best known as sleeping sickness, or African trypanosomiasis. The parasites are transmitted by the tsetse fly. There are two different forms of the disease that are caused by different pathogens, the West African form and the East African form, which are designated by their geographic distributions. Patients initially present with painful red swelling at the site of the bite. This is followed by a hemolymphatic phase where the patients develop intermittent fever, lymph node swelling, anemia, and immune reactions in different organ systems such as the central nervous system and the cardiac system. The neurological phase begins a few months to years after infection in the case of West African trypanosomiasis or within a few weeks in the case of East African trypanosomiasis. Clinical findings include headache, daytime somnolence, which gives rise to its name sleeping sickness, ataxia, delayed hyperesthesia, cachexia, and eventually coma. The only preventative measure is to avoid exposure by using insect repellents, wearing long sleeve clothing, and avoiding areas inhabited by the tsetse fly. As the protozoan parasite trypanosoma is not limited to Africa, it should come as no surprise that an American form of trypanosomiasis exists. The disease is widely known as Chagas disease. Chagas disease is endemic in Central and South America and is transmitted by the triatamine bug, also known as the kissing bug. Infections reported in North America and Europe are either imported or infrequently acquired through blood transfusion, organ transplantation, or vertical transmission from mother to fetus. Shortly after infection, patients develop a characteristic local skin lesion at the site of the bite, which is also known as a shagoma. The acute phase of infection manifests with nonspecific symptoms such as fever, malaise, and generalized lymphadenopathy. The asymptomatic intermittent phase is followed by a chronic phase with the development of cardiomyopathy characterized by arrhythmias, megaesophagus, and megacolon. In contrast to sleeping sickness, the central nervous system is rarely affected in Chagas disease. Prophylactic measures for travelers are preventing exposure to the vector by using insect repellents and bed nets treated with insecticides. A disease that poses a risk for individuals traveling to the Northern Hemisphere is Lyme disease, also termed Borreliosis. Lyme disease is caused by bacteria of the Borrelia type, which are transmitted by ticks. The vector is most prevalent in areas endemic for Lyme disease. Infected ticks can be found in the Northeastern and Upper Midwestern US and Europe, as well as in Russia. If left untreated, Lyme disease can proceed in three stages, beginning with an early localized rash, eventually causing a systemic infection involving joints, skin, and the central nervous system. As there is no vaccine available against Lyme disease, preventative measures comprise of preventing exposure to ticks, as well as the immediate removal of the tick after biting. Removal lowers the risk of infection as transmission usually occurs after an attachment time between 12 and 24 hours. In addition, close observation of the bite site is advised because the presence of a classical erythema migrans may indicate infection. However, not all cases of Lyme disease are accompanied by erythema. 
Lyme disease can be treated with antibiotics, with early treatment resulting in the highest success rates. Therefore, any sign of infection should signal the start of further diagnostics and, if indicated, treatment. Another viral infectious disease to be on the lookout for in the Northern Hemisphere is tick-borne encephalitis, which is caused by tick-borne encephalitis virus, in short, TBEV. Apart from its regional distribution, transmission is more frequent during summer, with infection rates highest during this period. Approximately 90% of infections remain asymptomatic, however the remaining 10% initially show flu-like symptoms and fever. After a fever-free interval, the central nervous system is affected, typically manifesting as meningoencephalitis. Treatment of meningoencephalitis is supportive and based on the severity of symptoms, but usually leads to full recovery. As a preventative measure, vaccines against TBEV are available. However, they are only recommended to individuals traveling to endemic regions, where they are more likely to be exposed to ticks. Preventative measures to avoid tick bites are generally advised. Immediate removal of the tick after biting doesn't further reduce the risk of infection with TBEV, as the virus is transferred directly after biting. One well-known disease that occurs on a global scale is rabies. The disease is often fatal and is caused by lysoviruses, which include the rabies virus. In encephalitic rabies, initial symptoms include agitation, confusion, and hypersalivation, followed by coma and death. Rabies is usually transmitted through the bite of an infected animal, most likely a dog or bat. The regions high at risk for rabies infection are Africa and Southeast Asia. However, transmission through wild animals can occur in almost all geographic locations, including Central and South America and Europe. As there is no drug available against rabies virus infection, Prophylaxis is highly recommended. Pre-exposure rabies vaccination is ideal. However, treatment consisting of post-exposure vaccination and rabies immunoglobulin after suspected exposure is particularly effective. So, let's summarize what we've just covered. Individuals preparing to travel should be informed about potential risks in the countries that they're traveling to. This includes determining whether the regions are at risk for diseases that can be prevented by administering a vaccine prior to departure. Also, it's usually quite helpful to be cautious about drinking water sources and food, especially if it's not well cooked. For any outdoor activities, it's advisable to minimize exposure to insects, which are often vectors of pathogens. We do admit that it's difficult to remember all of this information, but don't worry, it's all available in our library. So let's see how much you know about these travel-relevant diseases in our quiz.